Hello lovely booktubers, I'm Debs, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Raina Read Stuff. I am in the book shack and I thought it was about time I did a quick assessment of my experience of the first round of judging for the booktube prize. I was one of many judges for group A of the non-fiction prize and read some really interesting books. I am going to quickly go through them in reverse order. Um, I've just, I've got some notes here because some of them I read two months ago and that uh, I've slept since then. You know, woman of a certain age, it goes in one ear and out the other. Um, no, they didn't. They were all good. Uh, well, I had no difficulty in picking where I wanted to position books one, two, and six. Three, four, and five, I struggled with a bit, but I will talk you through what I decided in the end. So, some of these books I don't have copies of because I got them from the library and they have had to go back. But, at number six, this is Monsters by Claire Dederer. Claire Dederer is an American journalist, and this book is subtitled, What Do We Do With Great Art by Bad People? Now, I believe this started off as an essay, and... I think I would have preferred it stayed that way. Um, Claire Dederer is looking at a very interesting subject. Great art is not necessarily produced by great people. In fact, some of the people are downright nasty. Um, she starts by looking at Roman Polanski and Woody Allen and her argument is how does an, her, the preface for the book is how does an audience respond to things that they have previously loved when they find out that the people who created them really weren't very nice at all. Um, one thing she doesn't do is go into any detail about what all these people did. And there's lots of people. She lists lots and lots of people. But she lists them and it's almost like a, a brain dump of how she is unsure how she should now feel about these things. Um doesn't say what they've done. I suppose with a lot of them you you know, but probably only if you're a person of a certain age or a reviewer like, like she is. Um, so we have lots of characters in here. We have Picasso, uh, we have, she dumps J.K. Rowling in there. She also talks about Nabokov. Now, although he wrote Lolita and the book itself was deemed to be questionable, there was no, no, no question about his morality. So I'm not quite sure why he was in there. J.K. Rowling has views that I am unsure about, but she hasn't committed a crime. Um, you know, being outspoken and holding views that don't agree with your own isn't a crime. Um, Doris Lessing and Joni Mitchell are in this book. Oh, really, I hope you can't hear that drilling. I'm very sorry if you can. Um, yes, Doris Lessing and Joni Mitchell are in this book purely because she's questioning their mother mothering skills. Joni Mitchell put a child up for adoption. Uh, Doris Lessing left two ch children behind 
when she uh, moved to England. So overall, this wasn't a book for me. I think I would probably have enjoyed an essay, perhaps, or found it interesting. Um, it wasn't long, but it was too long for me. Um, right, number two, no, sorry, number four on my list was a book I got from the library and therefore I don't have it. Um, it was The Marriage Question by Claire Cl Carlyle. Now, this, Claire Cl Carlyle is an academic philosopher and this looked at the unusual relationships of George Eliot. George Eliot set up home in 1854 with a married man, G.H. Uh, Lewis, who was a journalist. Um, anyway, she set up home with him. She lived with him for 20 odd years? 25 years? Just less than 25 years. Um, his wife, Agnes, seemed perfectly happy with the relationship because she was having children with uh, Lewis's best friend. So she was obviously wasn't overly concerned. Uh, but then George Eliot, after Lewis's death, married uh, in 1878, I think, a much younger man. And so first of all, she was criticised for setting up home with a married man, and then she was criticised for marrying a younger man. Um, and this was the Victorian era, you know, people didn't do that sort of thing. Also, Lewis could have divorced his wife at that time um, and, and chose not to. Um, this is part biography and part philosophical discussion. It was well written. I enjoyed it. The, re the only reason I decided to put it in at number five was because I thought it was quite niche. And to be fair, I like George Eliot, but I probably wouldn't have read this if it wasn't for the booktube price. So then, at number four, Cosmic Scholar by John Schwed, I think his name is pronounced. Cosmic Scholar is a look at the life and times of Harry Smith, and I had no idea who Harry Smith was. However, I really enjoyed this book. Um, it turns out Harry Smith was a weird and wonderful guy who is renowned for his, um, his music, his uh, cataloguing, his anthropology, his, he was a painter, um, he was a folklorist, he was also friend to the beatnik generation whose names are dropped liberally throughout the book. Um, I think John Schwartz done a very good job, apparently Harry Smith left very, very few records. He had a number of um, instances of homelessness. And so this, the research for this book has been done through the records of other people and, and patched together. And he's done a very good job. This guy was interesting. Um, even as a child, he was interested in anthropology and he'd spend time with uh, a group of Native Americans on their plant plantation, uh, he photographed their rituals and customs, they accepted him, um, and he really learned a huge amount about anthropology at a very, very young age. He also is celebrated for, when was it? 1952, he um, he brought together a 
body of work which he called the uh, Anthology of American Folk Music and really reignited an interest in folk music and uh, he was a great folklorist. So interesting book. I didn't know Harry Smith before. I'm glad I uh, learned a bit about him. It was just tipped into fourth place because in third place I put The Underworld by Susan Casey and I think the reason I put that into fourth place uh, into third place rather than Cosmic Scholar was because it's not something I would normally read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Susan Casey's written other books about the sea and this starts with the premise, which I believe to be a true one, that people have been fascinated by what's down there for centuries and centuries. Um, but she said, the human race has more of a tendency to look up than look down. And we are missing a trick here because the resources that are available in the deep oceans um, could change the course of our history. Um, fascinating book. I think I would like to read more of hers. She accompanied oceanographers and uh, divers. She went in the submersible. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. Really interesting. And I'm glad that I read it. In second place, I place the book King by Jonathan Icke. Now, Jonathan Icke is a very well-known and celebrated biographer. This book ran to about 700 pages. It was certainly comprehensive. But I have read not full biographies, but other things about Martin Luther King Jr., about whom this book is about that makes no sense but you know what i mean um this is a warts and all biography this uh this details martin luther king jr's doubt of himself um it details his affairs and there were lots. It shows him as flawed and not as a hero from start to finish. It's very well researched. Um, he's chatted to so many people and It was really, it was gripping and really very, very good. It was long, but it didn't seem like it was a door stopper. Um, I enjoyed it and I, I voted that in second place, which leaves in first place a memoir of my former self by Hilary Mantel and I loved this. This was a collection of all sorts of things that Hilary Mantel has written over the years. Not fiction, um, but it included some of her journalism, it included some of her film reviews, it included general discussions about life, the universe and everything and she comes over as being so human and so genuine, um, full of humour. She's most well known, obviously, for her novels, uh, like Wolf Hall, but her writing was so much more extensive and brilliant. It was brilliant, and I really loved it. So, those are what I put through as my first three choices. Hilary Mantel's A Memoir of My Former Self, 
Jonathan Ike's King and Susan Casey's The Underworld. And those were the three books that went through. So there you go. I'm now, even though I said I wasn't going to, doing the next round of the um this is the quarterfinals of the nonfiction. Um one of the books is uh King by Jonathan Ike. So I will see what the other five are like and how they compare what I already know about that first book. Thank you for stopping by. Um, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you've read any of these books. It would be interesting to hear your thoughts. Nice to see you and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.